Conditions were perfect for this uh, vital third day of the Old Trafford Test match. England beginning 94 runs behind Australia's first innings total of 297. Woolmer and Greg, the not-out batsman. Here's Max Walker's first over of the day. He's bowling to Bob Woolmer. And it's edged, never carried to slip. So I see here our... Uh, and we've got another single off the outside edge. All coming very slowly off that pitch. And uh, pitching oh, a good uh, yard and a half in front of Greg Chapel at first look. Walker to bowl again and Greg to face. That's the shot he's been looking for. So something to start the crowd moving here. Over pitch ball and quite delightfully put away through the offside by Greg. That's uh, not quite where he intended, but it'll race away down to that far third man boundary for four runs. So the applause not only for the boundary, but for the 50 partnership between these two. And the first time he had a change of heart and tossed one up and very, very nearly got that through. So beat everything, beat uh, Rod Marsh as well. And uh, the thing that's mystifying Rod Marsh, I think, is how it missed the, missed the wickets. One of those where the uh, wicketkeeper gives it up. But he tossed this a good deal higher, it was made into a Yorker. Twenty-three to Tony Gregg and ninety-nine to Woolmer, and Bright's figures one for fifty-two in those twenty-six overs, eight of which have been maidens. In the air, safe and four runs, and that is Bob Woolmer's century. He goes to one hundred and three. A splendid performance. The last Englishman to hit centuries in successive innings against Australia. It was Ken Barrington back in 1965-6. And Woolmer has now hit his third hundred in Test cricket, all of them against Australia. And it came up in 276 minutes with 15 boundaries. It's in the air, and it's almost six. Kerry O'Keefe didn't see it. It often happens down that uh, side of the ground. It wasn't all that far away from him. Here's Thompson again. And fairly hammered through mid off there by Tony Gregg. Every ounce of his physique going into that. And fairly crushing it through mid off. Thompson. Look of thunder on his face there. And. Uh, Greg Chappell and Rodney Marsh in the previous over are a little annoyed with Warmer playing and missing. But, uh, those sort of frustrations creep into the game too much. They could uh, let this game well and truly out of their hands. It's uh, slipping away from them at the moment. They can't afford to, to let it slip any further. On a really hostile delivery, Marsh is taking it up and clamouring for a catch. He's absolutely disgusted that Tom Spencer has nothing at all to do with it. Look at the expression there on his face. Well, that was a really vicious delivery. The only man who moved up there is Tom Spencer. A little uh, hard there, but uh, all the astronomics and the business coming out here, it was a really vicious delivery, that. Climbed and uh, Marsh, they're absolutely certain that that deflection came off the bat. So it could be that uh, Tony Gregg might have got away with something there. Well, that's a lovely shot. So that great off drive repeated again by Tony Gregg brings together this uh, 100 partnership.
So exactly 100 added by these two. The stand of 100 is taken two hours and 23 minutes. That was an interesting ploy that worked out beforehand by Keeper and Bowler, but it uh, brought four runs to Bob Woolmer. It was 16 4, and prior to that delivery, Rod Marsh had taken up a position some two yards wide down the lake side. See, he's uh, moved right the way over there. And you could see that he was looking for a deflection there. Great chapel rolling that outside leg stump. That's another lovely shot. And it's gone through. So a little bit of uh, rugged Australian feeling at the moment. Ron Pasco, the substitute out there, allowing that to slip through for another four. And that's the short one again, the one bad ball. And this is a wicket where you can't afford to drop anything the least bit short. Warmer making the most of it, quits in through mid-wicket for another very good four. And again, the sun breaking through here. Up the uh, clouds we've had all morning beginning to break now. We've been promised a, a bright sunny afternoon and uh, looks very much as though we could get one. A little driving practice there for Wilma. Very pleasant half volley stroked effortlessly away again to extra cover. So another boundary to Woolmer, which takes him to his best score of the season to date. 122 is top score prior to this test match starting. It's a great shot. Lovely, delicate touch. Just easing the ball away behind point. No chance of Pasco cutting that out and. It's the first score of the second session. Bob Woolmer getting that away wide of Lenny Pascoe. We can have a look at that stroke again. It was uh, a classic textbook back cut. The bat just angled nicely and no chance of uh, the man at backward point cutting it off. And there it is. It's away from Gully. It's four runs and Greg picks up his 50. Not too much applause there from uh, Tomo. And Nice has got his hands together. So to the skipper Greg Chappell. Muted applause, I think, is possibly the way to phrase it. Just a flashback to what we were saying earlier that uh, it seemed clear that Tony Greg did get an edge to that ball. From Jeff Thompson earlier, but a desperately difficult decision for Tom Spencer because Greg's body was shielding the stroke. It's in the air, but it's quite safe, and it's away down the ground over deep mid off. Just reaching the ropes before Lenny Pasco is able to cut it off. Four runs. Teddy Greg has gone on to 57. That is the lead. Here's how England took the lead in this match. Greg didn't quite time it, but he hit the way over mid-off, and the 300 is up as well. 300 for three, and that's a most impressive-looking scoreboard compared to 297 all out. hit that, that cleared the boundary ropes by, oh, the length of the pitch and another 10 yards. A great hit from Tony Gregg. Take him into the 60s. That was a, a very cleanly struck ball. Right off the centre of the bat. 307 for three. That's just beaten the keep, and it's certainly beaten the man out at uh, mid-off. That's a good lusty blow from Greg. Uh, tactically, England have got it just about right. They've got through the first session without losing a wicket. 
and uh, they've got through the the opening part of the second session and the instructions from Brearley I would reckon uh, were to Greg who's the big hitter of the pair give it a go once you get your eye in after lunch safe four runs again and that shout you heard was from Max Walker don't know that it was anything very complimentary to uh, Bob Woolmer or uh, even to the heavens above 150 stand now and he's picked up four runs again from the outside edge Thirty-nine overs, eleven maidens, one for one hundred. And that's it, I would think. Yes, is out this time. A very definite uh, bat onto pad there, and a dolly catch to short leg. So, the congratulations going to Kerry O'Keefe. The end of another long, determined innings, but a highly valuable one indeed by Bob Woolmer. 137 runs is made in a very long stay out there has rescued England from disaster at the start of the innings and put them into a very convincing position so the fourth England wicket goes down after a long partnership the score on 325 and these two have added exactly 160 runs The Australian team too generous in their applause for Bob Woolman. He gave a couple of catches which weren't accepted, but he's battled on and played another really fine innings. That's a lovely shot again by Greg. A little late on it, and uh, able as a result to put it square defeated a couple of points left hand that short and got the sort of treatment it deserved and not waiting for it crushing it away through the big uh, vacant gaps on the onside second boundary to Alan Knott built off the ball in the piece and he moves on to nine Sure, nicely into position and uh, gets himself another boundary. <laughs> Short again, so three bad balls there from Kerry O'Keefe. And as we've said consistently here all day, this is no wicket on which to pitch the ball short, and particularly to a player like Alan Knott. Tony Gregg must be out, and it's a brilliant catch. So, Max Walker had to do it himself. And what a fine catch that was. Tony Gregg caught and bowled, caught and bowled by Max Walker for 76. Five out now for 348. And it took a brilliant effort off his own bat, as you might say, by Max Walker to see the end of Tony Gregg. Ball wasn't in the air very long, following through, snapped it up in really masterly fashion. So that ends another good, sound, solid performance from Tony Gregg. And the crowd here at Old Trafford rising to greet him. So he might have had a bit of luck in his innings here today. But... Uh, well worth a repeat of that fine catch by Max Walker. 
disappointed. Craig uh, turns away. And those runs will be welcome for Jeff Miller. Always nice to get off the mark. And those his first runs against Australia in Test match cricket. Also bring up the 350. 350, the score now for England, five men out. And those runs have come up in the 127th over. In the air, Rodney Marsh and Thompson has got a wicket with a bouncer. Miller, the man out for six. Court Marsh, Paul Thompson. It was uh, a similar type of stroke to the one that removed O'Keefe. Neither of these two players uh, particularly good hookers. And you could see that Miller is never really getting himself into position there. The ball's cramping him. And it comes off the splice. Up in the air. And Rodney Marsh just comes forward smoothly to take the catch. to think of something different. No bright chasing that, the ball going in speed, and he's never going to cut it off. So, Alan Mott there has uh, tried one or two off drives. He hasn't been able to find the gap on that side, so he brings out the old-fashioned Sunday afternoon mow. Thompson, again too old. And again... Outside off stump. Been out in about 40 minutes and there's still the score. I think Godfrey Evans and Tests in Australia once lost it for an hour and a half. <laughs> and these are not. Uh, these are not action replays you're watching. It's quite incredible that, uh, that identical delivery has floated past the outside edge of Chris Hole's bat on, I think, at least 14 occasions now. collects a wicket, caught at third man, would you believe? And that's a fairly unusual dismissal. One doesn't see that too often in a test match. Holland not looking for the square cut. A little bit of extra bounce there from Thompson, and it floated away, the wind helping it, of course, and ended up with Kerry O'Keefe down at third man. So a fairly remarkable dismissal, that. Alan Knott, the seventh man out for England, score on 3.77. And he goes for 39. So this is the way he went. Right underneath it. And that ball carrying all the way down to Kerry O'Keefe. Good catch. Nothing wrong with that shot. Perfectly good shot there by John Lever. So, handsomely away, nice backward cut there for four runs. Good shot. Doesn't all that short, that one. Chris Old, he's very quickly into position. He's at his best against uh, the spin. for the man being put on the fence. Certainly not a good delivery from uh, Kerry O'Keefe. Bowl him. That was a good ball. Lever beaten there by the lack of spin. He was playing for the ball that turned. And uh, I think it was probably Bright's top spinner anyway, but he has this drift in the air. It's 404 for eight. Lever out for 10, bowl Bright. 
That's how it happened. It drifted back in the air from it, well outside off stump. There it goes now. And it came between bat and pad with the lever certainly playing for the spin. I think Marsh has put that down. From uh, the look of uh, Ray Bright and the little rueful smile from Rodney Marsh, I'd say that is definitely a chance. That's a good shot. Straight over the top of mid-off. One bounce over the rope for four. Well, that's more the type of shot that uh, people up in this part of the world are used to seeing from Chris Old. 4.30 for 8, giving England uh, a lead at the moment of 133. Change in the attack, Bright still the bowler. And that's slogged over mid on by Chris Old. That'll race away for four more. <laughs> Typical aggressive left handers plowed over mid on. And that's two Thompson as he caught it. No, it's in and out. He shelled it. Not the sort of catch you're looking for at uh, 22 minutes past six after you've been out there all day. Possibly a little slow to pick it up. But uh, the sort of chance that uh, we've seen Jeff Thompson accept on more than one occasion in the past. And that's in, and it's out. Marsh has caught it. Well, it's the second occasion in this test match we've seen somebody fall like that. So, Max Walker's collected the wicket the outside edge off the bat of Chris Old flushing away to a bright at second slip out of his hands and there's the ever ready Marsh waiting to grab it on the rebound so Chris Old goes for 37 and again they're very useful runs from Chris Old had a fair amount of luck and fat early on but he got away with it struggled through has helped to take the total on to 4.35 for nine. And Willis at the far end to face Bright. Dice play finishing then with the academic forward push from Bob Willis. 139 the deficit then for Australia with the one wicket standing. Underwood and Willis will certainly come out on uh, the Monday again. It's a tough situation for Australia. England have battled hard. It was a hard grafting day in fact. It was uh, a day where Tony Gregg and Bob Woolmer set out to establish themselves in the first session. I don't blame England at all for grafting away in uh, the fashion they did. That was their job. Brealey's instructions were to see it through in the first session, then try and take the attack apart. Well, it didn't quite work out like that because the Australians fought back well. They were led by that magnificent try of Max Walker. I don't think I've ever seen him bowl better or with less luck. Uh, he'll certainly return far better figures and bowl less well on other occasions. Good support from Thompson and Brighton O'Keefe. The pitch is holding up well. The Australians can look at it uh, in the light of uh, the way the Englishman batted and the ball not getting passed about a great deal except with Walker and they may say to themselves well we can last it out uh, for the final two days but that 139 run deficit will loom large in Greg Chavel's mind over the weekend he won't be too happy about that nor will he be happy about the uncharacteristic slovenly fielding from the Australians throughout the day.